Are you serious? Holy shit! Are you fucking serious? The person who wrote this movie wrote Rush Hour and Rush Hour 2 and Rush Hour 3. The person has literally only written Rush Hour. Literally, look at their writing credits. Rush Hour, Rush Hour 2, Rush Hour 3, Rush Hour the TV show, Maximum Impact. Rush Hour 4. Oh, and he also wrote the Titanic TV miniseries from 1996. He just recycled the fucking bro- Wow! I cannot believe I didn't realize that it was that, because it is just Rush Hour! I think our collective minds have just been Holy blown. shit! Hello and welcome back to Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad Show. We watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. It's the 85th episode. That's not a real milestone. <laughs> Kyle, you're the other host of the show. Hi. How are you doing today? A little ill. A little we'll, ill. We'll, we'll make it through. We'll power through, okay? All right. Don't cough in my water. Okay. <laughs> We're coming down from the high that was After Earth uh, with a movie that stars one of our favorites, uh, a recurring good, bad, or bad, yes. bad good guest. Old wolf. Wolf, whatever his name is. It's something, something Russian. <laughs> uh, Alexander Nevsky? I think that's it. Something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, this one, though, not written or directed by him, merely stars yeah. him. No. I think probably producer, probably, maybe. Probably, probably. And this one, they actually got... No, kind of notable actors, actors who have appeared yeah. on this before. Yeah, one of which being Eric Roberts. Yes, Eric Roberts. We have a handful of people that sh show up in uh, Ale in Wolf's movies, um, and, and some of the smaller bit part people that we recognize from like mm -hmm. Black Rose or Treasure Raiders. Uh, there was uh, one of the guys, um, the the tall uh, bank robber. Yes, the of the yes, the. Uh, 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 Mickey Rusky, uh, mm -hmm. Mickey Rourke, but Russian. Uh, <laughs> Russian Mickey Rourke. <laughs> yeah, Russian Mickey Rourke. Um, he makes an appearance. Uh, he plays a henchman, and this is pretty fun. But yeah, so it's it's. Uh, but he didn't write or direct this one. They actually have a real director. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy who and I say real. Uh, the guy who directed this directed the Doom movie, which I have not seen. The Rock, the one with the Rock. Oh boy. So I, yeah, I haven't seen it. I heard it's like not good. <laughs> Uh, he's at least it's a video game movie, right? But it's it's at least uh, he's a director who's worked on bigger bigger name films. Yeah. He was also a cinematographer it, on a yeah, handful of things. Like he clearly knows how to shoot an action yeah. scene. Yeah, like there's stuff in here that works pretty. This well. is the best uh, produced in terms of like visually. This is easily the best Wolf movie that we've watched of mm -hmm. the three in terms of uh, the cinematography and and the sort of just the, the CG and to who, some extent. Whoever did the casting for. The, the Russian side of this yeah was spot on well it's just whoever it's a Russian movie made by well I like mean, like because like the guy they get to play Wolf's like his his quote unquote big bear oh is his such partner? a small dude yeah he's a little man he's a little tiny man I he, I called him baby Statham he's like <laughs> <laughs> he reminded me of Jason Statham but Little bitty <laughs> and Russian. <laughs> Jason stays in his mini me. Yeah, yeah. He was like uh, Russian. J it's like some weird like Russian experiment. They were trying to clone Jason Statham in a lab, and he didn't quite get big enough. <laughs> and they were just like, Nah, all right, it'll be great. Because <laughs> um, he has that pretty dope fight scene in the beginning of this movie, like in the cold open or whatever, where he goes into that warehouse and beats everybody up and like does a weird wire trick where he like rides around on a guy's neck with his knee. <laughs> Spins it's kind of wild uh, but the movie is called maximum impact it's from 2017 um this one it was it was all right <laughs> not to get to the end yet uh i had no strong feelings about this movie I, other I than a couple a couple, couple, a couple there were some moments that were really something to talk about and we'll talk about them particularly the end credit scene there's definitely a lot to speculate behind the scenes oh yeah because there's a lot of weird choices throughout oh. the film that we're like oh that must have happened. Yeah, there's some weird choices. I'm also vaguely certain this is like paid for by the Russian government as like a propaganda piece. Or like <laughs> Russian government do nothing bad. <laughs> like it's like the message of this movie. It's like actually it's all secret. Uh, American guy. It's Billy Baldwin in some office <laughs> yes. pulling all the strings on everything. Um, and also Apple was real into this movie. Yes. Why did Apple have there were all of the so many th like everything? There's so from much Apple product placement. Everything from an 
iMac all the way to the they got the tablets, they the, got the uh, phones. iPhones, and everything they do is literally they hold them up to the camera like this. Look at the Apple symbol. They're like, I'm talking to you on the phone with like the fucking Apple. And it, so many times, it's like, holy shit, Apple dumped some money into this movie. They're really into this weird Russian action film that's that doesn't know what it is. No. Maybe the biggest takeaway is I could not figure out what this movie was going for tonally. It, it's at times it's like your classic action adventure, like um, thriller, like oh we got to figure out who's what would the or, or else. Like, yeah, like it's gotta... like like a kidnapping movie. Where, you know, like oh no, the the secretary's uh, daughter or niece or whatever got kidnapped. Granddaughter, I think, got kidnapped. We got to save her or else she'll die. Mm-hmm. And like these stakes, like a Die Hard movie or whatever. But then other like, times, Body Cop as well. Yeah, in a weird way. Which is what, but that's what it leans more into is this movie's more basically just rush hour Russian yeah. hour this movie's just a Russian <laughs> hour <laughs> it is because it's we get the we get the Russian cop teaming up with uh, sort of the clash of cultures the American secret service come over mm-hmm. and he teams up with what's her name Kelly who's the actress I don't know her name in the movie um, they team up as like the buddy cop duo going around to save a kidnapped diplomat's daughter which is exactly the plot of the first rush hour movie I'm fairly certain yes I think or the second one I think, one of I think them. it's the ambassador uh, from China yeah. to the US yeah yeah Gets yeah. his his kid daughter gets or granddaughter or whatever gets kidnapped and they have to go find her and save her. That's the plot of this movie. Is that mm-hmm. the U.S. Secretary of State? That's, maybe that's a very generous term, kidnapped. Because yeah. the way they go about it right. is, yeah, yeah, it's not an actual kidnapping until the end of this movie. They they put a little spin on it. But anyway, so let's get into the thing. Directed by the guy from Doom, uh, it's for Czar Pictures because <laughs> it's a Russian movie. Um, and so. Uh, they we get some setup uh, exposition at the beginning explaining that that the Americans and the Russians are having a top secret diplomatic meeting in Moscow to smooth over your U S Russian relations. Which you'd think in that kind of situations you'd meet on neutral grounds like I don't know Singapore or something yeah like or that. somewhere like yeah not in Moscow but sure fine whatever so they're they're um they uh they're, that happens and then there so that's kind of the setup is that these people are meeting to have this 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 meeting to kind of smooth things over. Um, and then we're introduced to Big Bear, who goes into this warehouse and beats all these guys up while dancing. It's, Big Bear is five foot two. Yes. He's a little man. Uh, like I said, that's baby Statham. He's a snack sized Jason Statham. Um, and he beats all these guys up in the thing. But already I'm like, OK, this is clearly already better than Treasure Raiders or Black Rose in terms of like the production quality. Yes. This looks more like a real movie. These action sequences are pretty well choreographed. And makes sense. Yeah, and it's everything from explosions to car chases. Yeah. You're like, that, that kind of yeah. works. Yeah, most of the stuff in this movie is done pretty well. And again, I think it's because the Russian government threw a bunch of money at the movie. And it's like a big propaganda piece. But um, he, uh, Danny Trejo is yes. in this movie. What is he doing Shows in there? up and is just like, I'm a villain for a few minutes. Or not a villain. He's just he's, like He's a, a villain, but he's like in the pocket right. of the Russian government. Yeah, he's, he's like a drug runner or a gun runner or something. But here's the thing, he didn't originally know that, and then later in the movie he was like, all right, fine, I'll, I'll work with you. Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. But it, So we're introduced to him, and I don't I don't know what his point is other than to be like, for us to be like, Danny Trejo's in this movie, cool. He's slamming some dick pills at the beginning of this movie, ready to he bone. He gets into some, <laughs> some weird territories. <laughs> uh, he has some great deliveries in this opening scene. He's like, first off, I'm not a crook. <laughs> Second, I'm not stupid. Terrorism's bad for business. It's like, all right, Danny Trejo, you you crushing these lines. Uh, and I love, so then our guy breaks into the warehouse. Or he, he goes in through uh, Danny Trejo's warehouse, and he gets into his office, and he's talking to him. And, they're, and they, like... I don't know exactly the whole point of the scene, but at one point he's he's been arguing uh, with with with, with wolf. little bear, yeah, little bear who is wolf, who, who is, is a, a giant six man, foot whatever monster, six foot six, eight hundred pound <laughs> behemoth, yeah. And he this is this blows my mind how incompetent the quote unquote secret agents are in this. Yes, where they're just like they're he's literally arguing oh. in front of this guy. Yeah, he's arguing through his earpiece. And again, this is where the movie can't decide what it is because it, at times it wants to be this thriller action adventure like stakes movie, but at other times it is pure slapstick like over the top like uh slapstick humor where in this moment he accidentally says through his headset or through his earpiece he goes 
uh, he, well, I don't know what he says. He says something to Wolf. He's like, don't, shut up and don't talk to me anymore or something to Wolf. But Danny Trejo thinks he's talking to him. And this sparks like a big conflict between it's them. It's a fucking crowbar to the skull. Yeah, he gets be fucking wailed on with a crowbar. When I was like, oh, he's dead. Oh, <laughs> Great. Because okay. he falls on the ground and just lays there, <laughs> like twitching. And, uh, apparently, whenever you have a situation like that where you've been, I don't know, infiltrated and found out or whatever. Yeah. Like Danny Trejo's situation is. He just like, hey, FSB. Come get your guy. He slipped his shit and hit his head. <laughs> and I'm not going to change my hideout or anything. No. You guys are just going to come pick up your agent. Yeah. And then I'll be back later. I'll be here again <laughs> later. Okay, sure. Uh, and then we're introduced to the, uh, we go to America and we go, or introduced to the Secret Service characters, which Our Tom clown. Arnold is in this movie. <laughs> I was like, what the, did they watch True Lies? Right. <laughs> Tom Arnold is in this movie looking real uh, uh, haggard. Haggard. He's. It's funny because he looks like he's in pretty good shape for Tom Arnold, mm. but he also looks like he's dying. <laughs> like well, it, it looks like he sold his soul to like get in shape a little bit. He, he, I, I I think he is utterly convinced that he probably has prostate cancer. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's melting. <laughs> like it he's looks. Character, I guarantee you, he threw out every one of these lines of like, I got to talk about my prostate. Okay. Yeah. I have to talk about my prostate. Oh, and that whole fucking thing. So he has this whole re running gag with the prostate where where he's, he has to pee constantly because he's drinking a lot of water because he thinks it's good for him and but this has, makes him have to pee all the time because his pos pro prostate's the size of a grapefruit or whatever the fuck he says. Tell him that you left me standing out here with my thumb up my ass just like you guys. Yeah. Really? Well I wish I didn't have my thumb up my ass because my prostate is huge right now and I have to pee about every 15 seconds and probably feel good. But so I thought we, we established like four times in the first 30 minutes of this movie that he has to pee all the time. And I was like, so help me God movie. If this doesn't come back in a way that matters, you want to, you want a perfect excuse for that? I don't, how about dumb and dumber where Harry saves Lloyd from sea bass in the, the bathroom. I haven't stall? seen dumb. And dumber. Oh my God. I've seen, I've Whoa. seen dumb and dumber. I haven't seen it since I was like 12 or whatever. <laughs> no way to save. You had not seen it. Yeah, I saw reason, it when it came Lloyd's out. Lloyd's about to get his ass kicked by this guy in the bathroom and Harry runs in with his foot on fire and shoves into the toilet and knocks out the dude while doing yeah. it. I, I need a hapless idiot situation well, from Tom Arnold. Well, that's what I expected. I fully expected because it was the most obvious setup. I fully expected, okay, he's going to have to go to the bathroom during some high stakes situation he's not going to be in a place where everybody else gets kidnapped or whatever and then he saves the day or what you or, know what i mean or you because he a, was in the bathroom or you have a syndicate crasher moment where everybody's dead and he comes out he's like the hell happened yeah <laughs> yeah or whatever but they don't do any of that they just make this recurring joke of him having to pee all the time that never comes back in yeah, the show is dick to some guys though that was kind of weird does he yeah there is, is, is you want to see a one-eared elevator he pulls out a oh pocket. yeah it's so fucking weird we don't see it thank no he doesn't he does the gag is that you stick your finger oh through, you stick I your think. finger through? i think that's okay. the gag i've never done it but i think that's the gag I don't know. Um, but we're also introduced to Kelly Hu, uh, who's a Secret Service agent, um, and she's she's doing some gun training, some badass John Wick stuff or whatever. Uh, and Tom Arnold, there's some boxing. It's all terrible. Um, and then uh, there's I like there's a dramatic license plate zoom at one point. Then we're introduced. We cut back to we're introduced to Mark DeCock. I can't know how to remember how to say this actor's name. He plays the main villain in this mm -hmm. movie, kind of. Um, I, I guess you could argue Billy Baldwin is the main. <laughs> villain yes. but anyways um he plays like the main the main villain and uh there's this great moment where they're introduced they're on a plane flying somewhere with a car and the, the camera cuts to the car and it's the license plate and they're changing the license plate and it does this very dramatic three-part push in to them just, yeah, just changing, changing the it license from, plate. like california to, <laughs> to russia. like russia yeah yes. it's like drum just so dramatic okay cool um, and then his henchmen are just yeah. insanely hapless. Yeah. Like, they're just morons. They're, they're morons. They like fall and break something and he kills one by breaking Although their he, neck he with does, his he does foot. Have a, he, does, he says a great line about breakage. You ever wonder why I hired eight men for a five man job? It's called breakage. Breakage! You get extras in case you lose some along the way. He's like breakage, you know. It doesn't. Not everything makes it to the final. I hire extra, and he kills the guy, breaks his neck. Mark, however you say his name, is my favorite part of this movie. Yes, he's great. He is 
going fucking for it with his villain role. Him and the, his his yeah. right hand man. Well, are like, uh, the the Russian they are the Mickey dastardly Rourke. and mutley of this. They are fantastic. Oh, they're so hilarious. There's so many great little moments and gags throughout this whole thing, and they all wear hats. They're like the floppy weird hat gang. The whole movie. Yeah, yeah. and they, they put on like occasionally they'll put on like fake mustaches yeah. and beards. And yeah, stuff. It's, it's great. That's what I mean. These guys are in an entirely different movie than like Wolf is. Wolf is like I'm John McLean. I'm the baddest ass spy secret cop guy but, ever but, this, but then he, these guys are like fake mustache sneak into place <laughs> ha, ha, ha. like it's like <laughs> Let, let's face facts wolf is basically and i think they were trying to go for this will ferrell from the other guys uh, yeah a desk, he's a desk guy who's six foot six in a monster <laughs> yeah and they haven't given him field work. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't make any sense because so that's the whole setup for this movie is that after our guy gets knocked out with the lead pipe, uh, the little guy who's like the field agent uh, and Wolf is his partner who, like you said, is the desk agent. He does. He does like the the information or whatever, but he like talks to him through the headset, but he doesn't go out in the field himself. Mm-hmm. So they have to switch roles because our guy has like a concussion or whatever and he can't go out on the missions. And so Wolf has to go out on the missions. But Wolf there and they talk about how Wolf never has never been out on missions. We don't know how he'll do, but he's just great at it yeah. because, of course, he has to be because Wolf he's produced Wolf. this movie and he can't be like fumbling and bad at his <laughs> job because he's Wolf and he wants to look like a badass. But how much more interesting of a movie would that be? If Wolf, who has never been out in the field, comes the field agent and he's this giant beast of a man, but he's not a super badass. Oh, like yeah. he has to figure out like, yeah. you know what I mean? Because he's been behind a desk his whole life. You, see, you need a situation where he's like trying to like hotwire a car or something. And he accidentally rips off the steering wheel. Yeah, there's so many great things you could do with that. And that he ends up because of his size, he kind of ends up saving the day. But he's not just like a badass, like running around karate, breaking people's necks like and stuff the like Magoo he, of Russian agents. Yeah, it would be hilarious. And that <laughs> that actually fits in with the tone that we're getting from like our villains and stuff in this movie, who are these over the top zany bad guys who like dance while they monologue and so like literally Mark, De- whatever his name is, like like dances out of every scene that he's in. <laughs> Amazing. Um, oh, Eric Roberts is in this movie. Uh, he he's in there for like all of what seven minutes. Yeah, maybe? he's the Secretary of State who goes to yeah. Russia. To, he's not in there very often to negotiate. And I love there's a scene early where there he uh, Eric Roberts is walking through uh, the airport or something with mm-hmm. uh, his with the Secret Service, which is Tom Arnold and uh, the other guy, and they're walking through. And Tom Arnold trying to play a Secret Service agent in this moment is one of my favorite things because he's trying to do that like scanning the room for threats yeah. thing, but he's like, but he's got crazy eyes. Yeah, <laughs> he's like. And I'm like, that's not how secret. Okay, <laughs> good job, Tom Arnold. You're crushing in the, it. In the words of Always Sunny, what you need is an ocular pat down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this guy, he just his eyes are everywhere, and it looks like he's looks like he just like fucking snorted a giant, way too big of a line, and it's like, what the, what's happening, well, man? Yeah. <laughs> it's like fucking out of it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Also, Bai Ling is in this movie. Yeah. And Holy it's, shit. It's creepy. It's, it's weird. so weird. Uh, she rapes a dude in the beginning. Yeah. In the first scene she's in, which is great. Classic comedy. But uh, the, my, my favorite thing. So Bai Ling is, you may know her from Wild Wild West. Uh, she plays Mrs. East or Miss East or whatever. And she gets the great line where when East meets West because no. Jim West. Yeah. Great line. Um, but she's in that. She's also in Crank High Voltage, which she's fucking batty in like it's wild and in this movie my favorite thing about her is she's like the well, she undersecretary a, yeah, she also has exactly one scene yeah no she has two Two. Well, she's in two scenes. She, she has, like, one scene, scene that she focuses one scene on, focus her, on her. And this is the one where we're introduced to her where she sexually assaults an, an, an underling and then rapes him. And I'm like, all right, wow, we're starting off with a fucking doozy here. Um, but then she's in the board r- or in the conference room later for the talks. And my favorite thing is Bai Ling in that scene. There, This is a top secret summit between the Russian government and the U.S. government with the Secretary of State and all of his people and, like, the Russian equivalent, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um and she is in this meeting in a button-down 
dress shirt yeah. that is popped open and pulling cleavage falling out. Yeah, well, <laughs> they look like they picked her up from the red light district. Yeah, well, it looks like she's about to star in the in the porn version of this of this movie. Oh. Like it's it's look it's ridiculous. I'm like she's in this high powered government meeting, just cleavage everywhere, and and like nobody says anything about it. It's like all right, cool. Um, uh, it's it's pretty fantastic. Uh, this intern though, who gets sexually assaulted. Yeah, he, he doesn't. He's not too important. but no. he does do he a does fantastic the voice, right? Eric Roberts. Yeah, he impression. does the Eric Roberts voice. That's his whole point in this movie is that he gets on the phone now and then and does an Eric Roberts impression to fool people. <laughs> it's like, this is Secretary Jacobs. We have some ground rules. First, I'm going to need proof of life. Ground rule one: I make demands, not you. Yeah. The only thing he does. And that's how the movie ends. And I want to talk about that. I don't understand that. That like final scene is so it's weird. So in, yeah, it's, it's so insane. weird. <laughs> um, uh, so then we were introduced to the, uh, the Eric Roberts, who again is the secretary of state. His granddaughter is like texting some Russian rock star that she yeah, wants to this date. Is it's weird. weird. Um, and so she wants to go to Russia with him so that she can meet up with her Russian rock star boyfriend that she's been texting or whatever. So she can be sexually assaulted and then killed probably. Yeah. Um, like, you, you go to a foreign land, you pretend to be kidnapped. What do you think is going to happen? Bad things. Probably. It's not a great idea. <laughs> and the conversation though between Eric Roberts and his granddaughter is like all 80 yard and yes, so awkward. Yes. There, and the, not only that, there's a scene where they're on the plane. On the plane. And it, it like the audio is Fucked. Yes, it's real bad, and you can tell it's all it's all done after the fact. What were you thinking? Miley Cyrus is over. But Grandpa, it's Russia. I need to look great. Yes, Russia. Exactly the place I said you couldn't go. You really outdone yourself this rat. time. You are beyond serious trouble with me, young lady. And it's so awkward. The conversation between in this moment before the plane, but between Eric Roberts and his granddaughter, and he's she's like, I, I want to visit Moscow. And he's like, visit? Who do you know in Moscow? And he talks like they talk to each other like they're both aliens trying to figure it like it's the weirdest thing. Everybody else. Uh, Wolf's a terrible actor, but like most of the people are, are like fine in the rest of the movie, like doing whatever. Uh, it's some of it, the dialogue's not great, but they're fine. But this fucking conversation between these two is the weirdest goddamn thing. Um, and then I love this little scene. Uh, Mark Dukakos gets to Russia, and there's this random thirsty ass tourist who really wants to fuck him because she thinks he's Jet Li. <laughs> yes. Which is a running gag this movie does. That everybody, he, he is an actor. He yes. plays an actor. Yes. Uh, who played uh, Shaolin Cop. She, uh, which is apparently a German TV show is what they said later in the in it. Yeah. And the only person who's seen it is Wolf. Donya Lin. Shaolin Cop. One hour series. Shaolin. 1998 to 2002. Yeah. And his, his, his name is Tony Lin, I think. Yes. Um, and, and but like in this scene, they think he's like four different Asian martial artists, like actors or whatever. And that happens numerous times throughout the movie. They just like they're like, oh, it's Jet Li. It's like he doesn't look anything. OK, um, but uh, the Lou Diamond Phillips one, he at least kind of looks like <laughs> that one. I always off as Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah, um, but he doesn't look anything like Jet Li. But she's like with her husband and I love she's talking to him she's like biting her lip and just like oh what are you what are you doing here yeah it's so fucking weird say hello to Jet Li uh, uh, no 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 that is um, mm -hmm. Lou Diamond Phillips oh Tony Lynn so the, then they get on the plane. We talked about the plane conversation. They also were introduced to Paul Bradley, who's important PB, the guy named PB, who's like works for the secretary or whatever. Um, and there's a great joke where the one intern guy's like P PB, more like Prince bullshit. And everybody laughs awkwardly. Ha, 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 yeah, ha, 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 yeah, that happens. It's like the boardroom scene in like uh, a bird dimmick or whatever, where everybody claps for an awkwardly long amount of time. Uh, they, they they laugh like to to this non joke forever. Paul Bradley, not pretty boy. More like Prince bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Can we settle down? It's so yeah, fucking and he's weird. like randomly kind of like the bad guy at the end, right? And Paul Bradley is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he just he, he was he, like the he's informant, just a dude, and then at the end he's like, oh by the way, I'm oh by the way, I was 
to, I told them about your granddaughter being here or something. Because that's like the premise yeah. is that they get, eventually somebody kidnaps, the, actually kidnaps his granddaughter, even though she was fake kidnapped to begin with. And they find out it was Paul Bradley that was involved. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. But mm. um, then we get to Grump International Plaza. <laughs> Did you notice that? It was Grump International Plaza. <laughs> Grump, yeah, that's hilarious. Um, then they cut the thumb off of a, a guy and break yeah. his neck. And then they they take his thumb and nobody wants to ha- handle it. Yeah, so he just stuffs it into he the guy's in pocket. His pocket. But they, I love that they cut that guy's thumb off and then break his neck. I was like, you could have done it the opposite way, but okay. Because <laughs> your guys are just real bad, real mean. <laughs> We're real um, bad guys. Yeah, and I love. There's a great callback to uh, uh, Treasure Raiders. I think. It's not really a callback, but it kind of felt like it because they go, man, what do you, uh, how'd you get so big to wolf? Milk. Milk. Russian Russian milk. milk. How'd you drink as a child? Godzilla milk? Hey, Russian milk. And what have we seen Wolf do? Smash that Russian milk, man. He loves that shit. Um, also, it's it's in the contract that any movie uh, Wolf is in, we have to have numerous actors talk about how big and strong he is at numerous times. Oh, you're so big and strong. All right. Now, I'm no expert in the cost of military hardware. Kyle, not an expert in the cost of military hardware. They're, Continue. They're, they make a trade for arms for, for exactly one weapon of $750,000 for a single-use Rock, like rocket propelled whatever. Oh, that's right. Where they yeah. buy that? It, it, that like, seems that seems a little high. a little excessive. Not but, uh, once not again, a lot. not an expert, but uh, I'm an expert. <laughs> Buying a, a single use rocket launcher, 750 seems a little high. They get shot at, and they're riding in the helicopter, and they get shot at by the rocket. Uh, it misses, and I don't understand this scene because the rocket's coming at them, and yeah. the pilot's like evasive maneuvers, and Wolf. For whatever reason, I don't know how he knows this or why. Yeah. Well, he's an expert pilot because reasons. Is he? I think so. Oh. Because reasons. Yeah. Why wasn't he flying then? But he's like, no, don't, don't, don't try to get away from it. Wait. No, hold steady. Baby bear, you can do your train for that. And then he's like, wait. And then now, and he's like, do this. And then they dodge the missile. And yeah. it's like, all right, I'm glad and you then knew this. The, the, the granddaughter is in her phone the entire time yeah. even after the missile goes by yeah. you almost died yeah um, I mean it's a joke and they steal the mummy joke and I was like how fucking dare you steal jokes from my favorite movie of all time they steal the joke where uh, the guy the intern guy I think it's the intern um, has pulls out while the missile's coming at them he pulls out like eight religious uh, necklaces and prays to like all of them at once which is the whole fucking scene in the mummy it's Benji yeah yeah where Benji pulls out and he's like trying all the different and I was like how dare you how dare you <laughs> and i'm sure that wasn't first done in the mummy but it's where i know of it from uh and then the lesser baldwin shows up how uh, how dare you sir how dare you call well, okay yeah he, billy is way of the lesser away on the lower end of the baldwins you got you got alec you got alec you got steven you got steven you got billy and then i'd say daniel's probably the lowest yeah those two are billy at least has a backdraft it's <laughs> fair enough but yeah, it's it's a steep drop off after Alec, to be fair. Yeah, yeah it, it, I mean, top acting for each of them is probably uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross yeah. for Alec Baldwin. A B C A always B B C closing always be closing always be closing. Then you the usual suspects for Stephen Baldwin. Give me the fucking keys, you fucking cocksucker motherfucker! Knock it off, get back. Number three, step forward. And then backdraft for Billy. I don't have a problem with drilling, but let's just have one drill, Lieutenant. Now one for the company and one for me. Roll the hose now. I'm not gonna quit, Steven, you hear me? And then yeah. Daniel just is... He's like that Wahlberg brother who's making... doing the restaurant stuff. Yeah, he's the chef. <laughs> Whataburger? Isn't that what it is? Wahlburgers. Wahlburgers. Yeah, not Whataburger. That's a different thing. And also, I don't understand why Apple was like, yeah, use all of our stuff in this movie. It's so wild to me because they have so many different Apple products all the time. And it's just such a weird, distinct thing. Such a weird movie for some that for Apple to be like, yeah, have all our stuff in it. This like obscure Russian action flick. I was going to say something that was really going to piss you off, though. I was going to mention Adam Baldwin. 
Oh, Jane. <laughs> yeah. He's not a Baldwin He's brother, not a though. Baldwin brother. <laughs> the man they call Jane. The hero of Canton. Um, oh, I got to talk about, I got to find him. The IMDb reviews for this movie are, are they crazy? hilarious. <laughs> I got to go through these real quick. Okay, okay. Uh, let okay. me find them real quick. Because there, there's like five, but they're all just my favorite. Th- they're all like in, I think, like Russian translated to English. <laughs> and it's it's hilarious. People were so mad about this movie. <laughs> Incredible job. <laughs> No, there's one good review, and okay. the rest are terrible. Let me see. I got it here. Uh, big time trash. One out of ten. Primitive C-class movie casting C-class actors. Made for money laundry. Does not worth to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Does not worth to watch. That's great. <laughs> Next one. Two out of ten. This is by K. Daniel. No, 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 no. That it goes from lowercase to half uppercase to all uppercase. That's the title. Like all O's too. No, it's just Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Twelve minutes in, and I decided this wasn't the movie for me, which is a shame, as there are a few recognizable faces in the cast, and I'm sure they can do much better than this. I can only imagine they were desperate for the money. Two is a generous score. That one's okay. Um, two out of ten simple just titled simple review I wanted to use one word disaster but the administrator had not allowed what a shame this something is not worthy of more (laughs) I don't know what that means one out of ten just another garbage just another garbage of untalented steroid carrier (laughs) is the title of this review lame talentless pointless worthless those four words will do the most awful movie we have seen in 2018 Nevsky is historically the worst actor of the planet. How he manages that is beyond anyone's understanding. (laughs) I love this one. One out of ten. Primitive. Very primitive. Primitive jokes. The budget is the same as John Wick, but quality is a hundred times worse. As all Nevsky movies, which one is... This one is made for money laundry. (laughs) Is it always laundry? laundry Money laundry. This is made for money laundry at the bottom right there. (laughs) Laundering. Uh, I love this one though the final review 10 out of 10 great movie I really enjoyed this movie a lot great movie to have on while having friends over with some beers that was wolf <laughs> this movie should be ranked way higher uh, and then has the thing where you can re- like say whether or not the review was helpful like other people can and this one 7 out of 47 people found this review helpful <laughs> so like 40 people were like no, what is wrong with you anyways right. I thought those reviews were hilarious <laughs> used for money laundry uh, there's a really random scene where Baby Statham is like perving on shopping photos. Yeah, yeah. What is that? And what is he even doing? And then he's like just straight up at some point like looking up porn and, and corrupting the software. Yeah, he gets <laughs> a virus on his computer. That's just like it. It looks like the like the 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 thing um, from uh, there's some movie where they're like, oh, I think it might be Die Hard. Yeah, it is. It's uh, the Live Free or Die Hard, the one with Justin Long, where they like send a one of them sends a. Uh, a pop-up bomb or whatever to a mm-hmm. computer and all it is is like a million shitty like porn pop-ups and stuff on the which, screen which that's the definition of hacking by the yeah, way yeah yeah exactly <laughs> that's movie hacking is uh, how many windows can you open yeah. and close real quick <laughs> yeah um uh and <laughs> i love that they uh so the the plot is the the uh, daughter stowed away on the plane to get over there and they get over to russia and she goes to meet up with her boyfriend um and they're gonna take her out to the mall uh wolf and uh kelly who's character are gonna like be security for her while she goes to the mall mm. to go shopping and they get there and at the same time the the paparazzi guy shows up there's a paparazzi guy who follows around this russian rock star and then there's a the, our gang of bad guys, the floppy hat brigade, as I called them, because uh, they all wear sweet hats uh, mm. of differing uh, styles. Uh, and our main guy wears the floppiest brimmed hat that I've ever seen a man wear, but it's pretty dope. Um, and then, so they get into this mall, and my favorite thing is they're the worst sec- gar- like personal security in the history of personal security yeah. in this scene. She goes into the store and is shopping, and she dips out... Of, of their view, view. Which they, they were like, no, it's fine. It's For fine. like two minutes, and they don't go check to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then she comes back up, and there's a moment where a... Uh, oh, my nose is running. God damn it. Ugh. 
So she dips out of the shot, or she dips out of the shot, out of their line of view. They mm-hmm. do nothing. But then she comes back up, and they think it's her still. Yes. They think it's her. We know that she switched. And she's switched. straight up approached by that dude. Yeah. Who's by, already to chloroform her. Yeah. He, a guy, a random guy that they don't know walks up, grabs her wrist with a rag, and it's like, and then realizes that he realizes that it's the boyfriend. Is like, oh, you're not who we're trying to kidnap. So he walks away. But that all happens in our guards. Right in front of them. And they do nothing. <laughs> worst security in the history of the fucking world. They're too busy over there flirting to fucking actually protect anybody. Um, Oh, I love, though, the moment before he goes over there to kidnap her, our bad guy goes, a proper kidnapping takes months of planning. We have two minutes. And it does this weird digital zoom in on him when he says that. (laughs) (laughs) He goes, but luckily... I'm great at improv. Ba da and he dances out of scene or whatever. It's so fucking weird. This movie, the tone is uh, everywhere. Successful kidnappings take months of planning. We have about two minutes. But I'm great at improv. Um So there's a big mix up the uh, they thought, uh, the, the, they think that he gets kidnapped, she gets kidnapped, but she actually isn't kidnapped. She just runs away with her Russian boyfriend, rock star guy, and they go do their own thing, and he throws her phone in the water because it's backed up to the cloud. Oh, the scene where he does that is the, I love, again, the Apple merchandising in this mm-hmm. movie. It's so fucking hilarious. He's like, he, he she pulls her phone out, and she go he goes, uh, I love my, or he goes, he throws it in the lake, or he goes, is this backed up to the cloud? She goes, yeah, and he throws it in the river or whatever. I love my six. You will love the eight plus even more. (laughs) You'll love your new iPhone eight plus that I just bought you. (laughs) And hands her a new iPhone. Uh. (laughs) And I was like, it's got a 6.1 inch retina display and a 12 megapixel camera that'll make your selfies. Super hot. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> Fucking uh, placement. Yeah, Apple commercial in the middle of our movie. Uh, there's a pretty sweet car chase that we skipped, but it doesn't matter. And I remember the, over the course of this whole movie that, man, Wolf truly has the charisma of just a wet sponge. He is the <laughs> least charismatic action hero fucking ever. He just it grunts. And like is on camera. He's just there. Mm. He's he I I don't know what he thinks it is that Arnold Schwarzenegger does in movies because he clearly thinks he's doing that. But boy, could he not be further from (laughs) from doing that? Uh, Then he gets T-boned, though, which is pretty cool. And the car gets flipped, right? Yeah, he gets flipped over and he gets out and he's like uh, covered in water because he hit like a washing cart. Like it's the thing from Chernobyl, like the Chernobyl miniseries. It's like spraying out the shit to keep the nuclear waste down or whatever. Um, but yeah. I, uh, and then the 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 other one, Hugh, what, what's her name? Kelly? Yeah, I don't know her ac- or character's name, but it, Kelly who is the or Kelly Hugh Hill. or however you say it is the actress. Uh, she is like just straight up stealing people's vehicles. Yeah. Yes. Which, I mean, I guess you can, but my advice is show that you're with, like, yeah. Secret Service or even or say that you are. Yeah. She just takes his car. She doesn't even say, hey, I'm Secret Service or whatever. She just takes his car, and he's like, hey, hey. okay. Um, I'm going to find her name real quick so we can stop. Uh, Katie. Agent Katie Des something. Desmond. Gotcha. Oh, she was also uh, this in The Scorpion King. Oh, no. She was the the in the movie The Scorpion King. She was the uh, the one who comes out of the water, and flips her hair. Yeah, yeah the sorceress. The King. Treasure Raiders guy, the, the lead guy. Oh, was he? I think he was the main bad guy. You're right. He was the main yeah. bad guy. Oh, there's some weird connections. The, going I guarantee on you, there's a producer who was working on The Scorpion King who is either big into the Russian movie scene. Well, and something. now remember, I said, remember when we did uh, Syndicate Smashers? I and I wonder if Scorpion King was like a Russian production or something because remember I said the one guy who plays the main Russian villain in that movie yeah. that he was a stunt coordinator and he was a stunt coordinator on this the Scorpion this is, King. Damn it! No. Damn it! <laughs> but yeah, I, I think there's some weird like Conspiracy Scorpion King con- stuff thing going. going on there. I don't know because it's yeah you're totally right that that was the same guy. Wait, would it be crazy if everything about Russian cinema was connected to the mummy. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> it all, it all somehow ties back to the mummy. And that, that also makes sense with the joke. Mm-hmm. Maybe somebody involved. I didn't look at who wrote this movie. That would be an interesting question. Maybe it's, it's, it's Benji. <laughs> Ross Lamana who wrote rush hour. 
Are you serious? Holy shit! Are you fucking serious? The person who wrote this movie wrote Rush Hour and Rush Hour 2 and Rush Hour 3. The person has literally only written Rush Hour. Literally, look at their writing credits. Rush Hour, Rush Hour 2, Rush Hour 3, Rush Hour the TV show, Maximum Impact. Rush Hour 4. Oh, and he also wrote the Titanic TV miniseries from 1996. He just recycled the fucking ru- Wow! I cannot believe I didn't realize that it was that, because it is just Rush Hour. I think our collective minds have just been Holy blown. Holy shit, you fucking- What a sellout. <laughs> what a fucking sellout. Sell out with me, oh yeah. Sell out with me tonight. <laughs> he was like, you know what? I had this great plot, uh, this great idea for a movie. Russian fucking- or a diplomat's daughter gets kidnapped. We'll just do it again in Russia. Yeah, Fuck it. Why not? Why not? Ah, oh, you fucking shit. <laughs> I mean, he's never written anything else. That's the only thing he's ever written is Rush Hour. So he's just like, fucking, why? Why? It's the money train. Why would I do anything yeah, else? Exactly. <laughs> uh, Billy Baldwin's hair in this movie is also it's, incredible. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like... It looks like they 3D printed yeah. hair 20 years ago. Yeah. It looks like it, remi- oh, it almost reminds me of like a like a Dragon Ball Z character's hair, like like just He's powering like, up. Yeah, right? it's like <laughs> it's so fucking ridiculous. Um, uh, but so Kelly, who uh, Agent Katie and uh, and Wolf are working together, which I don't know Wolf's character's name in this movie. Oh, this is Wolf, whatever. I called him. Um, but then Kelly, who goes, she breaks into the the diplomat meeting and she sneaks under the table. Yeah. And starts stealing phones and nobody notices. It's, again, it's like, are we making a straight up comedy? Uh, you see, I, I know it's funny though, is that tonally it does, it is the closest to Rush Hour where they try to, Rush Hour I think actually does a pretty good job of mixing the stakes of like an action event or an action flick, uh, like the buddy cop action flip where like a flick where we're, oh, we got to save the, uh, the ambassador's daughter. And it's like, oh, big stakes, high stakes, but also lots of slapstick, lots of like jokey jokes. Yeah, but here's the thing. If you were to take Wolf and uh, Kelly Hugh, neither one of them really reflect the uh, dynamic of Chris Tucker and Maggie Chan. No, no. And neither of them have remotely the charisma that either of like like Jackie Chan is hilarious and also a really good stunt performer. Chris Tucker is just Chris Tucker being Chris Tucker in that movie. Yeah, and like so that works together really well and it's funny for at least for one or two movies. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen the third one, but um, their dynamic works really well. But in this one, Wolf is brings nothing to the table. No, he, he's a wooden block. He's yeah. a giant wooden block that people act. On. Yeah, and Kelly, who's a fine actress, but she's not doing anything interesting in this. No. Movie. She's just playing like a generic, like I'm a secret, eight, like I'm a secret well, service. There's not person. even a whole lot of investigative stuff that goes no, on. No, they just kind of go from point A to point B, and I don't even know how they figure out half of the stuff they figure out in this movie to go there. They're just like, uh, mm-hmm. we got to get to the next point. Let's go. All right, cool. Um, and the closest thing we get to investigative is that they identify the the uh, paparazzi photographer. Yeah, yeah, they figure out who the f- photographer is and, and and are able to track him down. Um, yeah, this is my note though, where I wrote, "I can't parse what this movie is. Is it an action adventure comedy or is it just slapstick nonsense?" I'm assuming they were going for something like Rush Hour. That's the note I wrote right yes. here. Yes, <laughs> before I knew and that. There's a scene literally. with literally. The, there's a scene with the uh, with. Shaolin Cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his, they, yeah. What, Where he goes what, in with the assistant God. and his fighting her. Again? What's his name? Uh, Mark Discacos to cake. I, it's Mark. Uh, the, yeah. uh, the uh, character's name uh, is something else. Hold on. Tony Lynn. But yeah, like, Tony Lynn. part where Tony Lynn is pretending to be like, like very, very Chinese and he's supposed to be in with like the triad yeah. or something and he goes into Danny Trejo's office yeah and tries to get in on his business yeah and then he's like oh wait I don't need to be here and yeah. then he just leaves yeah and they're playing this weird because I thought he I couldn't figure out what accent he was trying to do I'm like oh is he trying to do because I think he is trying to do like a super kind of like stereotypical Chinese accent my name is Wang thank you for seeing me on such short notice oh you said it was urgent first a gift from my employer but he's also they're playing like they're playing like spanish like uh uh guitar music in the background (laughs) 
which made me key in to think that he was trying to pretend to be like Spanish. My name is but he's Jeff. yeah, but <laughs> my name is Yiff. <laughs> but he's not at all. He's and I was so weird. It's such a weird scene. Mm. Um, but again, it's very slapsticky and ridiculous. Um, but he's ta- I love. There's the one scene. I think it's right here where he's talking to the assistant. He goes in, and I think it's some, I don't know, he the, that guy, uh, Tony Lynn, ends up in somebody's office with that one assistant lady who's, like, in, like, one scene or whatever. Yeah. And they get in a fight. And they start dancing. And they like, start le- dancing. They start dancing. They start dance fighting. And then, because he, he, like, puts his hat on sillily, and then they start dance fighting. And then at the end of the scene, the uh, Russian Mickey Rourke sticks his head into the shot like a cartoon character and says something, and then the scene ends. And it's the weird, it's... There's so many scenes in this movie that are so surreal that we'll get to the biggest one. The ending, the end credit scene of this movie is the strangest it's thing I've witnessed crazy. in a long time. Um, but it takes up, a, it takes like a straight hour, maybe hour and 10 minutes for the daughter, the granddaughter to finally get kidnapped. Yeah. Yeah. She actually finally gets kidnapped and they rolling around in their mobile fucking uh unit truck thing that the guy stole or yeah. I don't know. It's like, yeah, Doesn't matter. Acquisitions, who needs yeah, this? Yeah, they steal a big truck. Uh, at one point, and I don't understand this, oh, they're in the truck and uh, uh, Kelly who's sitting there and, and Wolf like leers at her from across the room awkwardly. Yeah. And I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. But then he grabs an apple and gives it to her and I was like, what is really happening right now? But then he grabs a bowl, bowl and gives her a bowl cut. Yeah. And starts giving her a bowl cut and it's the weirdest thing. And now I, I need you to explain to me, Kyle, what the point of this I don't, is. They said, we need to have you dress up like her Why? as a decoy. For what? For what? For, some <laughs> for what, Kyle? So they all they, they dress up our main uh, uh, female character like the girl who got kidnapped. Yes. They give her the same haircut. They dye it blonde and they put her in the same clothes and nothing is ever done with it. She just runs yeah. around dressed like this other character for the rest of the movie for seemingly no reason. I could not figure out what their plan was. They're like, for a decoy, but we're not doing What's the anything plan? with the decoy. What, what, what are you doing? What is she decoying? <laughs> like, what? I don't understand. It's so weird. Uh, nothing happens with it. Um, and this is where she actually does get kidnapped for real, for real. Um, in, in like a, in the park or whatever. For real reals? For real, for reals. <laughs> Um, I will say the Shaolin cop, like little fake TV part thing they do. is like the best part. It of it. is. It's, it's fucking great. amazing. I, I love how his character's entire life is obsessed around him being in like a successful show in like Germany. And he thinks that everybody should know him from yeah, that. Yeah. The best dude. Ich bin ein Koch. Shaolin. Yeah, I love I love him. Like Mark Dukakis in this movie is incredible. He's he just fucking knows this is nonsense and he just goes for it and leans into it super hard. And I I could not have more fun watching him uh, in this movie. Um, so then what happens? Uh, it's, uh, Wolf throws some ladies in a pool. I don't remember why that happens. Because they're in the, the Russian bathhouse. Oh, they go to the Russian bathhouse and they like the models start attacking him. Well, she the uh, or something. Katie's in there first. Yeah. And she's like supposed to deliver a message, but they know him. But yeah. then he shows up anyways. Yeah. And they, they, they do know him and they're like Fine. lusting after him. Yeah. And then the mafia guy comes in or R- Russian mafia dude and they just get into a fight and he throws people in the pool and then leaves. Yeah. It's, and it's just like, what was the point? What to that? Was the, the point was that when Wolf wrote a scene into the movie where a bunch of Russian models could come and rub their hands all over him and go, oh, you're so hot and big and strong. So that we were reminded of how hot and big and strong Wolf is. As a viewer, <laughs> um, uh, then, then there's some weird thing, and I don't understand the subplot with the nuclear thing. What is that? So they put a nuclear thing, like something that emits nuclear nu- uh, uh, radiation or something, yeah. in a statue and give it to Danny Trejo or something. Okay. I don't understand because that that doesn't really come up. Yeah, that's the thing they use that to get it to break into his 
I don't maybe understand as what... a locator. No, they said it needs to trigger. Well, because it triggers something in like uh, it triggers. There's like a thing where they're in the in the mobile defense unit or whatever, mm-hmm. and they, and it's like, oh, we detected a nuclear radiation, and like, oh shit, it was a nuke or whatever, and they go after it. But I don't understand why or what. There's a lot of moving parts in this movie that I feel like don't add up, but they just need to like they, write them in to get from A to B to C. They get a bunch of C four. Yeah. They make, a coffin, they make a coffin, a C4, C4 coffin. <laughs> and then they're like, be very careful with that. And then I was like, that's that's not how C4 works. C4 is not unstable. Incredibly stable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can like fucking do all kinds of stuff. You can with set it, it on fire. Yeah. And it won't explode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is true. Also, one of the things not that I really. by the way. No, do not write. The G Beer B Beer does not endorse lighting C4 on fire. <laughs> Um, but there is a great moment, uh, or not a great moment. One of the things I noticed about an hour into this movie is that the soundtrack never stops. There is yes. music yes. It playing. It is nonstop throughout the film. There's like a scene that doesn't have music blaring over it. Like one. It's wild. And it's all just like, it's it's not even like a score. It's just songs. Like it's just like weird, like free, like royalty free music that plays <laughs> over the whole fucking movie. And I don't understand it. Stop following me. I will drop this. Okay, here's the deal. Kidnap girl, international crisis. Both our careers are in the crapper because it happened on our watch. Uh, then some more stuff happens. I don't. Doesn't this one, matter. this one's just kind of hard to break down. It's just so because it's so like it's all over the place. It's so all over the place once she gets kidnapped, and there's so many like different like plot elements going on all at once. My notes are almost done, but I feel like we're not at the end of the movie, so I don't know. The fact that Eric Roberts is in here, like we said, is completely meaningless. He just stays in one location the whole time. Yeah, uh, Wolf lifts the scooter off the ground. Doesn't the Terminator do that in a movie? Doesn't he lift the back of a motorcycle off the ground or something? I think so. I think that's in but one. He's of them. also driving. He's also like this huge man driving <laughs> yeah. a little bitty scooter. Yeah. Around. I was like, I need a wide shot of this. I really need, and I don't really ever. We do get a little, but I really wanted just a wide lockdown shot of the street and just Wolf riding like giant Wolf in this little tiny scooter going through the shot. <laughs> yeah, it would have been fucking hilarious. Um, uh, then he, uh, they fight a janitor. Yeah, yeah, because they're like they're in really crappy costumes, or they're in real, not only really crappy costumes. Everything's made in China. By the way. Yeah, because it, yeah, they're made in China because they're costumes, they're movie costumes mm-hmm. that they bought. Somebody did, I but don't then know. they forgot to take off like they're like Rolex, and that's the yeah. giveaway. That's the giveaway. So she she nut punches a janitor, and then I don't even know where they're trying to go. Well, here. They're, they're trying. They're also trying to interrogate them, and they're awful at trying to get it at interrogation. Oh, this is a great scene. This is a great it, it, scene. It, it, it's, it's pretty funny, funny. But it's like at the same time, it's like, oh boy, you guys are not great at your job. It's pretty funny. Wolf grabs the guy and has him against the wall, and is like trying to get information out of him. And uh, uh, Kelly Who shows up, and she's like, "Nah, you don't know how to do this." And she moves him and puts him over the ledge of the stairs or whatever, and yeah. then starts tickling Wolf. <laughs> He's like, he's pretty fucking ticklish. He might drop you, which I thought was kind of funny, but uh, but they are get, truly gets, terrible at their job. He gets shot by the guy who they thought was dead. Yeah. And then dead. she immediately pulls the gun and shoots that guy. Yeah. And so like, now oh. everybody's dead and they don't have any right. information, but they somehow figure out where to go. Good job. <laughs> um, uh, then they go, somebody has the line, put him in the box. Right with the C4. Let me go. Stop. What a great line. It's a great line. Um, uh, also, some of the dialogue, expository dialogue, literally somebody says in this movie. So enough of the drama queen crap. Kill the girl and frame the Russians. <laughs> and somebody yes. responds. Was that, was that Willie Baldwin? Yeah. And somebody responds. That is exactly what we're doing, sir. <laughs> Hurry up and oh, kill the girl so and frame the Russians. Thanks. It's, 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 those, it's those little moments where like we take a break from the movie to remind everybody what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like Billy Baldwin. We need you to to scream what's happening uh, on in your fucking coked up bender. There's no way that they didn't film that 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 because remember when we uh, in Treasure Raiders when um uh, what's David his Carradine? name David Carradine was in the movie yeah. and all he only scenes he was in were like a restaurant, or a whatever. spa, yeah. or whatever. And this one is the only times we see Billy Baldwin is him in like an office, is probably his home office or whatever mm. that they shot this in, uh, and he's either drinking or smoking a cigar or has a cigar and it's just like i feel like they're the in the writer for billy uh, baldwin agreeing to do this was um i i'm i will film this from my home you, office you had better 
make me look more successful yeah. than my brother. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I will either be drinking or smoking a cigar in every scene that I'm in. Uh, he really, truly looks like he uh, got coked up and did all his lines in like an hour. Um, and then did all of his lines. In like oh, an hour. <laughs> uh, boy. Um, I love this scene too. At the very end, they show up to the warehouse and somebody says, I'm not here to fight you. And then nothing happens. And then all gunfire breaks out. And then uh, I didn't understand. And then there's a scene with Danny Trejo because this is when they're yes they're fighting. <laughs> in, they're, this is when they're fighting in his warehouse. How dare they? And he oh my Scarface. God. <laughs> God, this one's for you, bud. It is Danny Trejo going down on this lady. Oh yeah, that part. There's that first. part where he's being distracted, and oh god, Lord, he gets distracted. He's like, "What's going on out there?" Yeah, and she <laughs> goes, she goes, but real quick before he gets out there, she goes because he's hearing gunfire, and he go and he starts to go out there, and the girl he's with, she goes, "Sorry, Peaches, I'll be right back." I thought I was imagining it because you are such a sex pistol. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stupid. But he grabs his his hand cannon yeah. and goes out there and says, "Say hello to my little friend." And the best part about this is it's Danny Trejo shirtless with his jeans unbuttoned yes. <laughs> and his guts just kind of hanging out over the top of his. Danny Trejo is, by the way, like what seventy one or something. I don't like that? know how old. Yeah, he's an old man. Now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's so good. He's say hello to my little friend. I was like, really? Okay, great. Um, Which works because all of his henchmen are like, all right, we're done here. Yeah. The Russian government's like, all right, no, I guess we don't really care about your illegal activity. Yeah. We need to handle this. Yeah, because there, there's actually like three different factions here at this point that are all kind of shooting at each other. There's the two guys up top who are like the the actual bad guys who are there to like frame the Russians or whatever. And then there's Danny Trejo's like henchmen who are there. Uh, and then there's like the, the cops that we're with, like the good guys or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're shooting at each other. And then Danny Trejo comes out and is like, Hey, wait a second. We got this all wrong. It's those guys shoot them. And they shoot the other guys that are up there. Um, but <laughs> so then uh, Wolf goes into a room, uh, goes into the room where Mark Dukakos and uh, Russian Mickey Rourke are uh, and immediately just snaps Russian Mickey Rourke's neck with a belt. Yeah. Just breaks his neck. And again, the the whole premise and setup of this movie is he's Wolf is the the desk agent. He doesn't he, he doesn't know how to do this, but he just does. He yeah. just does. He's just a yeah. badass who just, does know how to do it. He kicks his ass and he kicks Mark uh, Dukakis or whatever. His yeah. Name is. <laughs> Mark Dukakis. <laughs> Mark Dukakis. Dukakis That's is the, the guy uh, who ran Duke. for president in like the 90s or whatever, uh, isn't it? Uh, not Dukakis was like a presidential nominee yeah. in like the 90s or something, yeah. or early 2000s, I think. Um, How do you say his name? Uh, Dukakis, I think. Dukakis, close enough. It's something like that, yeah. But he... he, he he has this. He gets into this fight, and he's just reciting like his Shaolin. Dukaskos. Dukaskos. He's reciting like his Shaolin cop lines and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Your size is no match for the lethal weapon my body is. I love it. It's so good. And there's uh, he he get, they have the they get a call back to the interrogation thing where he's trying to get where the girl is. Yeah. Like, well, before he does that, because he gets on the roof, and we got to talk about the roof. We're good. Before he does that, t uh, Tony Lynn uh, throws a, a a stool at him. And it's the world's tiniest stool, and Wolf catches it like it's the most badass thing in the world. He basically threw like a Fisher Price stool at him, and he's like, "No, I catch it with my bare hand." It's like, "Yeah, man, it weighs like six ounces." <laughs> but it, when he catches it, his earpiece falls out, and I don't know why that matters, but it, apparently it does. Whatever. But then he gets up on the roof, and we get the rooftop fight, and ho, oh, this roof. Reminds me of the roof from the room, the way the compositing oh, is. Yeah, it looks <laughs> awful. It looks so bad. But he is dangling him off the roof. Um, and, and as he's dangling him off the roof, we get a sweet badass camera, uh, bad boys camera spin around Wolf. And I was like, you know what, movie? This is the ending we needed. We needed a terribly composited roof battle uh, that ends in Wolf dropping a guy off the roof. Yeah, but he spills the beans. He, he yeah. says everything. And then... So Wolf saves Wolf's him. go back in, but he's like, he pulls out a... Does he get pulled no, out the, well, he something? says... Because Wolf's trying to find the detonator for the C4. Oh, right. And, he has and he's, dragging, he's holding him, and, and, and Wolf goes, where's the detonator? And he goes, it's down by my computer. And Wolf goes, okay, and sets him down, and then goes to go get the detonator. And as he's doing that, Mark DeCascos is like, ha-ha, joke's on you. I actually have the detonator. And Wolf's reaction to this moment 
is, is my favorite it's moment. He bulldozes the guy. He body checks him yeah. off of the <laughs> roof. And in just the part where he was like, I need to say this as I'm falling to my death. Yeah. Which, that's how Rush Hour ends, is the guy falls off the fucking roof, I think, or Rush Hour 2. He, he falls down whatever uh, museum or whatever that uh, is. Yeah, the, or uh, it's a casino, I think. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I think that's Rush Hour 1. One of the two, there's a guy that falls off, yeah. Holy shit, they really did just reuse everything from Rush Hour yeah. in this movie. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, it's he body checks him off the roof, gets the detonator, saves the day. But th- th- uh, everybody... Everybody knows about this secret meeting. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Because they are brought on to Russian television to be interviewed. Oh, or well, something like before that. we get to that, the, the weird rush, the interview scene, which that's the closing credit scene. I got to talk about how he sees Billy Mon- or Billy Baldwin oh, in okay. the computer monitor. And he's like, I'm coming for you. And sh- and I was like, shoot the monitor, shoot the monitor, nope. shoot the monitor. Shoots the camera because the, the monitor camera. is pricey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he does shoot the camera, though. Um and then we find out that, like we said earlier, that Paul Bradley or whatever is the mole or whatever. And yeah, they, they it, kick his they ass. They kick his ass or whatever. It's stupid. doesn't matter. And she's like, looks like PB is going to stand for prison, bitch. <laughs> um, but then, oh, and then her at the end of the movie, her hair is long again. And he, Wolf's like, your hair. How did you do that? That is classified secret service information. If I told you, I would have to kill you. And I'm like, this movie just. We shot this first. Yeah, we <laughs> shot this. Well, and she was, well, I mean, she was just wearing a wig in the, the other parts. But, yeah. Oh, my God. So then we get to the end credit sequence. And again, this is the weirdest. This end credit scene. They're on, like, Russian talk show. Mm-hmm. And it's Wolf and his partner in the studio. Who are supposed to be undercover field agents. Yes. What do you not do if you're an undercover field agent? Go on TV. And talk about and it. Talk yeah. about your job. <laughs> yeah, man. And then uh, and then they're talking. And then on the computer screen called or on the monitor called in, they have all of the American secrets. Tom Arnold and the intern and uh, Kelly Who's character. And then they have somebody else that calls in at one point or something like that. It, It's the weirdest thing. And they're all talking. And it's like super meta because one of them is talking about how. You would have phoned it in. I did actually phone it in. We all phoned this in. Get it? Yeah. Ha 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 ha. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Fuck you. Um, it's the weirdest TV inter- This whole scene is so strange. And then it ends with him on the phone, on yeah. his phone with w- Billy Baldwin yeah. talking to him. And then it just goes to credits while he's in the middle of this interview. Yeah. And it's sequel baits. They fucking sequel bait this because he's like, you want to play? Let's play. Maximum Impact 2. Boom. God. Um, also, we didn't talk about it because we mentioned it earlier. The, the final scene before the, the interview is uh, Eric Wolf and uh, or Eric Roberts and um, uh, his intern mm-hmm. who does his voice. Yeah, he does his doing voice the voice to and, Eric Roberts. And Eric Roberts walks up and overhears him doing it. And then Eric Roberts pulls up his iPhone and snaps a picture of them that's the weirdest, like, most awkward, like, neither of them are looking at the camera. It's just, like, a shot of them. And then posts it on Instagram, and then the movie end. Or, well, then we end it. Yeah. It's, I was I, like, what is this? What? 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 What just happened? Who wrote? I know who wrote this. The person who wrote Rush Hour Keep in mind. Keep, it's not, it, it, here's the thing. It's not like Eric Roberts has been in bad movies. He was in Dark Knight. Yeah. He's been in lots of good stuff. Probably at least one. <laughs> I don't know. It's so weird. This whole movie's so weird. Uh, it's. I would say it's bad, bad. Yeah, but there's like there's some little golden nuggets. It, yeah, it just everything that involves the two ba- main bag, the two bad guys, is golden. Fantastic. It just super cut out them. It's amazing. Uh, the rest of it's in, like nonsense. Um, it's a, almost a little too competent compared to like Treasure Raiders or Black Rose or whatever that was called. Yeah. Um, it's almost a little too competent shot a little too well. Um, it still has the, the acting is still pretty rough at parts. The dialogue is still pretty rough and there's some fun, goofy shit like wolf body checking Mark DeCascos off a 12 story building, um, which is fun, but it's not, 
it's not as good as Treasure Raiders in terms no, of like entertainment. No. Um, probably close to Black Rose, which wasn't super entertaining. But yeah, I would say it's bad, bad. Uh, you you'll get everything you need out of it from this little so review. For every high, there is a low. There is a low. So hopefully we'll get back high again. Maybe we'll get real high next time. <laughs> Um, but that's going to do it for this episode of Goodbye, Bad, Bad. As always, you can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Uh and support us for as much as you want or as little as you want or don't at all. That's fine, too. Um, I have a podcast called This Film Is It where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, the one then that we will have just talked about is Children of the Corn, I believe. So if you want to hear us talk about Children of the Corn. Um, or uh, the one before that was Fantastic Mr. Fox where I ranted for like an hour about how much I did not like that movie. It got real, it got real bitter. <laughs> that, oh that episode but I did not Wes enjoy I, I did not enjoy it uh, it did very little for me but uh, I had, it was weird I was expecting to anyways um, we both twitch stream if you yes. want to find us on twitch Kyle is uh, uh, gbrbb underscore Kyle underscore Kyle I'm gbrbb underscore Brian uh, my computer works again to stream Yay! because uh, I figured out and I posted on social media and stuff that uh, my fan uh, so my I realized my, my CPU was overheating mm-hmm and I was like, I wonder why my CPU is overheating. I bet it's just dusty. And I went to vacuum it. And when I did, I, I, I took the fan out to clean it. And when I looked, I realized that <laughs> yeah, the that, thermal paste... It, it crusted, right? ...was gone. Gone? Just completely gone? I built that computer eight years ago. I had not put fresh thermal paste on it in eight years. So I went and bought some thermal paste and a new fan. Boy, my computer... Runs like a charm all of a sudden. Because <laughs> it's not running at 8,000 degrees. So anyways. Um, we also have a Discord channel. Brian yes, doesn't know how to use it. I don't know how to use Discord. But uh, we do have a Discord channel. The link for that is in the description below. Um, and you can join and, and chit chat and that sort of stuff. It's a good way to share movies. We have a recommendation uh, little thread thing in there. Um, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, you can also, if you want to recommend movies, the easiest way. Discord's a good one. But also uh, Facebook Messages is probably the best way. Um, uh, in terms of... Uh, I scroll through those when we're looking for movies. Uh, you can send us mail to at our PO box. We are about to, or not about to, but we almost have enough to record another one, but I have an episode that we already recorded that isn't even out yet, so it, that'll be coming out soon. There will be mail. There will be mail. Um, but yeah, the uh, PO box is right there. You can send us movies, whatever you want. Um, not whatever you want. Mainly like movies yeah, and stuff like that. Just- Fun gifts, stickers. Uh, any stickers we get? I've been um, putting on this back here. In, in a general thing. I forgot um, to put a new message up. God. God damn it! Happy birthday, again, um, Katie. <laughs> generally speaking, baked goods are not a great thing to stick in the mail for two reasons. One of which, it's like a kind of a tamperable seal. Yeah. And well, secondly, they go bad. They go bad, and we don't pick up the we pick up the mail every couple of weeks, and then it sits in this office for in this studio for a week or two before we record it. So at that point, anything you made is maybe not very good anymore. Um, but if you want to send random like uh pre-packaged stuff from your country or wherever you're from you know that's fine um but yeah if if you can't seal it well it'll probably go bad um anyways that's gonna do it uh for this episode of good better bad bad and until next time keep watching movies maybe or maybe not go find a better uh there's go go watch go watch rush hour yes and then not watch maximum don't watch maximum impact it's real not it's not good it is on amazon though if you want to but don't also, Apple products, buy those. Yes, yes. We got forgot to get that plug in. Whew, clear that check. Ooh, God, money. Just in time. Whew, you're welcome, Apple. Thank you. I'll uh, <laughs> expecting that payment on the first of the month.